Welcome back to All This Math. This is Professor Parker, and today we're going to do some exercises involving exponent rules. All right? Now, problems like this that you see behind me, right, they involve an awareness of the rules of exponents or the properties of exponents. All right? As long as you know the properties, then you know how to apply them when you see examples like this. So if you look at number one, you have b to the negative four-fifths power. And don't get don't get overly concerned because that frac that uh, exponent is a fraction, right? Or we or we call it a rational exponent because a fraction is a rational expression, all right? Times c to the one fourth, all raised to the fourth power, all right? And then down here for number two we got b to the negative one half power divided by b to the one fourth power, all right? So we got a fraction, all right? Now up here, now if these bases were the same, if this was a b and this was a b, or if this was a c and this was a c we'd be able to use what we call the multiplication property for exponents, where we would just add the exponents together. But make sure you look carefully when you see a problem like this so you don't get confused and end up using the multiplication property when you can't. You're not allowed to use the multiplication property right here because our bases are different, right? Our bases are different. So you can't just add these exponents together. All right, if the bases are the same, that's when you add the exponents together, okay? But one thing you can do is what we call the power of a power rule. Right, I think of it as the distributive property for exponents, all right, or the dis or the distributive exponent property. When you have terms that are inside parentheses that have their own exponents, and everything has its own exponent, because even if there's no exponent written, that means the exponent is a one. And then you got an exponent outside the parentheses. What you can do is you can multiply the exponent outside by every exponent inside. You can multiply the exponent outside by every exponent inside, all right? All right, and again, like I, like I say, I think of that as the distributive exponent property. Uh, that's what I call it. I call it the, the distributive exponent property because it reminds me of using the distributive property where if you have a number outside of the parentheses, you multiply everything inside by that number outside, which also reminds me of this brother that's on my T-shirt, the late Patrice Lumumba, the rightful leader, rightful elected president of the Congo back in 1961, who was then assassinated by different um, European forces um, in collaboration with the United States, right? They was in on it too, right? Um, who was a Pan-Africanist, who was an anti-colonial struggler, and who believed in the distribution of resources to the people, right? But a lot of people, there are people in positions of power that don't believe in that, so they had to take them out of there, right? Like a lot of the more progressive revolutionary leaders on the continent of Africa and beyond in other places as well. But if you're not too familiar with Patrice Lumumba, definitely go do some research on Patrice Lumumba. All right. Go check that brother out. All right. So um, we're going to use the, like I said, what I call the distributive exponent property. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply four by negative four fifths. So you got to know how to multiply fractions. All right. So you're going to have B, to the negative 16 fifths power. Four times negative four is negative 16. You don't multiply the four by that denominator. The four does not get multiplied by five. Because if you think about it, four as a fraction would be four first or four over one. Numerator gets multiplied by the numerator. Denominator gets multiplied by the denominator. So this invisible one under the four gets multiplied by the five to give you a denominator of five. Make sure you remember that. That's a very popular mistake that a lot of students will make. When they multiply a whole number by a fraction, for some reason, they want to multiply the whole number by the numerator and the denominator. Don't do that. Don't fall for that trick, right? That's an error. Don't do that, all right? Then we're going to do the same thing with the C to the one-fourth. So we're going to have C to the first power. Why is it C to the first power? Because four times one-fourth is one or four-fourths. Right? Four times one fourth, it's like four times four quarters. Four times four quarters is a whole dollar. Right? Four times one fourth is one. All right? So that's going to be C to the first power. And, you know, when, when one is your exponent, you don't really got to write it, you know? Um, but also, another thing we're going to do is this. Because this exponent is negative, we're going to use the negative exponent rule because more than likely, your textbook probably says if you see a problem like this, your textbook probably will expect you to write your answer with no negative exponents. All right? In terms of simplifying your answer, you should eliminate all your negative exponents. So the way you do that is you create a fraction, right? Because this is not a fraction, but you create a fraction. And then anything that has a negative exponent, 
we'll move to the denominator. So you see how that was that, that was essentially in the numerator. So you can think about it like this. Imagine, visualize it as a fraction, right? Over one, right? But now, so this B is going to go downstairs because it had a negative exponent. And the purpose of moving it downstairs or to the denominator is so that the exponent can turn positive because you want your exponent to be positive. So the only thing, the rule is, you can move the term to the other part of the fraction and then that turns it positive. So if it was already in the denominator and had a negative exponent, you can move it up top and then the exponent becomes positive. That's a rule that you just have to memorize. That's called the negative exponent rule. So we got the power of a power rule or what I call the distributive exponent rule and we got the negative exponent rule. All right. So this is our final answer. C over B to the 16 fifths. Now, I don't know if you're, if, just in case your teacher or your professor wants you to change this from a rational exponent, we can put this um, in radical form. So we can have C over, let's see, the fifth root of B to the 16th power. So this is equivalent to this, right? When you have a rational exponent, your numerator is going to be the exponent and your denominator is going to be the root. Numerator is the exponent, denominator is the root. Numerator is the exponent, denominator is the root, right? When you rewrite it in radical form. So whenever you got a rational exponent, that means that expression or that term can be rewritten in radical form. You see, this is my radical sign, right? Looks like a long division bar um, with the little tail right there. That's a radical sign. All right, now let's look at number two. We got b to the negative one half divided by b to the one fourth. Now, we could do... We got options. That's another thing about the exponent rules or the exponent properties. You got options. Like right, right now I'm looking at this and I could immediately use the division rule or I could use the negative exponent rule. I got options. I got choices. Um, I'm going to probably use the division rule because that's just what I'm used to. I use the division rule first. So I'm going to do, I'm going to subtract this exponent minus that exponent. This top exponent minus the bottom exponent. Top exponent minus the bottom exponent. All right, so that's going to look like this. B to the negative one-half minus one-fourth. All right, um, negative one-half minus one-fourth is going to be negative three-fourths. All right, so we got B to the negative three-fourths. And then we don't want our final answers to have negative exponents, so we're going to use the negative exponent rule just like we did here, right, just like we did here. So visualize this. Imagine this was already a fraction. Just put a one underneath. Whenever you want to make something look like a fraction, just put a one on the bottom. And that makes it a fraction. And you have not changed the value of it. You haven't compromised the value of it. You just put a one underneath. Because anything divided by one is that same thing. All right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this because we want to change this to a positive. Move that downstairs. Now, what's left up top? Right? What's left up top, though? You say, well, what's left up top? You can't just have a blank space up top, right? Yeah, you can't. Imagine that the fact that, that you also understand that the coefficient of any variable is a one. If there's no coefficient written there, the coefficient is a one. So that one, imagine that that one is still left up top. So that one is still up there. All right. And then we got B to the positive three fourths. I know you might be wondering now, well, but don't it, don't it still have a one? It does. It still has a one. Right. Um, you could think of that. You could think of it as that as though there's an infinite number of ones being multiplied by each other. Um, as coefficients of B, all right? Because they all have a product of one anyway. So if you move the B downstairs, there's a one left up here, all right? And now that the B's downstairs, it still has an invisible um, coefficient of one. Or you can think of it as it just matched up with this one that was already down here, all right? But this is our final answer, one over B to the three-fourths power. If you want to put it in radical form, you could do this. Put it in radical form, put the B right there. Remember, the numerator is going to be the exponent. And the denominator is the root. One over the fourth root of b to the third. One over the fourth root of b to the third. All right? You know, now let me see. Let me, matter of fact, real quick though. Like, we started this off using the division property. But I could have started off using the negative exponent rule. Let's see what would have happened. With the negative exponent rule, if I had just moved a b downstairs. So let's say I move this b down to the bottom, right? I'm leaving a one on top. And now I got b to the one half times b to the one fourth, right? So now I create a situation where I get to use the multiplication property. 
I get to use the multiplication property. I create a situation. So I can use the multiplication property. So now I got one on top. And now with the multiplication property, you don't multiply the exponents. You got to memorize that. When, when you're doing multiplication between bases, you add their exponents. You add them up. So you do one half plus one fourth. One half plus one fourth is B to the three fourths. So that actually would have got us to our answer quicker. Well, not really. I mean, it was still this same longer because I wrote out all the steps, right? I didn't write one half plus one fourth just now. But you still get one over B to the three fourths, which is still one over the fourth root of B to the third. So either way, we still get that. And this is good, because right? this is a way to check your work. Doing the problem in different ways, but using the same accepted rules, right? But just in a different order, um, or using different rules, because up here, we didn't have to use the multiplication rule, right? Down here, we did. Um, it's a way to check your work, right? It's a way to confirm that you did the right thing, okay? So this is a way, this is a way to practice using the, the exponent properties, and I highly recommend you do a lot of practice with these because the exponent properties are very important. And when you get the calculus, you're also going to be using the exponent properties um, in order to simplify expressions and calculus. All right. So go get some practice with the exponent rules. And I'll see you all on the next video. And do your research on Patrice Lumumba if you're not already familiar. And even if you are familiar, go do some more research on the brother. Go refresh your memory. All right. Peace.